Hi, welcome to the Zintro webinar series. My name is Bhairavi Mehta. I manage the business development efforts for Zintro. Along with me is Zach Rhodes, who also manages the business development. We would like to thank the over 500 people who have signed up for this webinar for participating in this event. This is the third installment of our webinar series covering the highly relevant topic, marketing tips for consultants. It is with great pleasure I introduce Tina Mosetis, CEO of Mosetis PR, a full-service New York-based marketing and public relations firm. Ms. Mosetis has over 20 years of experience in the communications field and has represented firms around the globe. She has enhanced the image and success of high-profile clients in both the commercial and nonprofit sectors. Ms. Mosetis is an award-winning New York-based marketing and public relations specialist and has received American Women in Radio and Television's Pinnacle Awards for public relations and several tele awards for her advertising campaign. Uh, we are really excited to have her as a presenter for today's webinar. And um, during this webinar presentation, we would like to remind our audience that we would be handling uh, questions uh, you may have during the presentation and at the end of the presentation. So without any further ado, uh, Tina Mosetis. Thank you, Bhairavi, and I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I'm excited about discussing some very straightforward ways that everyone can help spotlight their business and expand their business network. Because there are very many experts in a variety of fields around the world that just don't have the budget to hire a publicist like me. And you know, somebody like me, what, what kinds of things we do is help people develop their websites. We write engaging copy for speeches and newsletters. We create press kits press kits for companies so that will help them get quoted on radio, TV, newspapers, and high, you know, very high public profile publications like the New York Times. But there are very simple steps that we can all take to help get our businesses recognized and expand our network and our bottom line. Before we move forward with the advice, we'd like to take a moment to do a poll question of the audience. And if by Ravi, if you could move forward with that, that would be great. Sure. Uh, dear audience, we are about to launch the first poll question. That's the result for your first poll question, what have you done for publicity? And over 8% of our audience have replied that they have hired a publicist in the past. 35 have replied that they have never tried doing publicity. Over 50% have replied that they have tried doing some publicity on their own, and 4% have worked with an intern to help with the publicity, and about 2% all of the above. All right, so we have quite a good mix in the audience, and um, seeing that there are a large percentage of the audience that have tried to do it on their own, I think the tips that we give today will be very helpful for both the people who've tried before and the people who are about to try to spotlight their own business. One of the first things that I recommend, which is the most simple thing you can do, is to push yourself to get out and meet people who might be interested in the services that you offer. I encourage you to go to industry meetings and networking events and be sure to introduce yourself to as many people as you can. Just to give you an example, let's say you're in the healthcare field, be sure to go to all the healthcare conferences, hospital events that you can possibly attend. And there are a lot of societies in every field. For example, in the healthcare field, there's the American Academy of Dermatology or the American Psychological Association. And you should be attending all these events. And wherever you go, be sure to talk about your business with great enthusiasm so that people understand you love what you do and that you're good at what you do. And I know this seems you know, like a simple thing to mention, but be sure you have your business cards with you everywhere you go. Is the sound still a problem? Um, sorry, by Robbie, I'm getting some feedback. No, it's fine. Uh, it's OK? All right. Um, and for the people who are unable to easily get to meetings in other cities, please be sure to meet as many as you people as you can in your own city. For example, again, if let's say you're in the healthcare field, 
just be sure to call hospital executives and ask them for a 10-minute introductory meeting to discuss the services that you offer. Now, I know sometimes it's hard to make these cold calls, but frankly, having done this millions of times over the years, I know that if you call 10 people and ask for an introductory meeting, at least a few of them will be nice enough to help you, and that's a good way to get started. Now, it may seem, again, too simple to mention, but your business card is extremely important, and it's really vital that your business card states clearly what you do and the services that you offer. For example, in my field, a lot of people don't have any idea what a publicist does. So if they meet me and keep my card, which explains the services I offer, such as media relations, then that person may one day refer me to somebody who needs my services. So I always encourage everybody to list the type of services that they offer on their business card. One very important way to make yourself known in the community is to give talks. I highly suggest that everyone develop a 20-minute, well-prepared talk about your expertise. This is not a hard thing to do. You don't have to be an outstanding speaker to give a presentation. You simply need to put your thoughts together in a logical outline that gives people interesting information about your business. At the presentation, be sure to distribute informative handouts to the audience that includes free advice about your business and your contact information. And you can approach various organizations that are willing to have speakers for free, such as community or trade organizations, or even your local library. And I want to encourage you to always be thinking that everything you do should be branding your business, even the way you sign your email. Be sure to sign your emails with your business name, your contact number, and a tagline that briefly explains what you do. For example, on this slide, you'll see that I sign all my emails with a brief list of my skills, expert media relations, strategic planning, branding, crisis management. That way, every time somebody sees your email, they're reminded of the skills and services that you offer. It's also an extremely important way to get business is to encourage your current and former clients to make referrals to you. And when it's appropriate, I highly suggest that you offer a referral fee. In some fields, that's not considered ethical. For example, if you're an attorney or a physician, but in many fields, it's perfectly fine to do that. And now, by Ravi, I think we'd like to go to the second poll question. Dear audience, please go ahead and answer the second poll question. Have you ever tried partnering with a business in a complementary field to help promote each other? Over 59% of our audience have replied yes, and over 49 have replied no to uh, try partnering with a business in a complementary field to help promote each other. Well, I'm excited to hear that a lot of people actually have tried because this is a simple way to expand your potential client base and to work with other people who can add value to your business. For example, in my business, in public relations, there are people that I partner with, such as graphic artists and web designers. I, I write copy for websites to help them be more customer friendly, but I don't actually do the technology of websites. So I have web developers that I work with. And I help refer clients to them, and they help refer clients to me. And that's the same story with our graphic artists. So I encourage you to think about the kinds of people um, that you can work with to share your client base and to expand each other's bottom line. Another point that I think is very important is for everybody to consider writing a simple monthly newsletter. The newsletter will help update your current and potential clients on your latest products and services. And I encourage you not to make it a very cut and dry newsletter. You want to add a lot of useful information and free advice so that your customers look to your newsletter as an interesting resource that they know they're going to gain information from. And they'll look forward to receiving your newsletter if you do it in a clever and kind of fun way. Another thing that's very important is to get involved with local charities. And very often, charities hold events where they offer raffle prizes. And this is not appropriate for all businesses, but some businesses, it is appropriate that you can donate your service as a raffle prize. Some people are offering products. Some people are offering services. 
In return for you offering a free raffle prize, the charity will often give you a free listing in their event program, or they might announce you on a banner, etc. And it's just a good way to help get the name of your business out there. I encourage you to also get involved with volunteering your time at a charity or nonprofit agency. And the reason I encourage this is not only is it just a good and nice thing to do, but many of these prominent volunteer agencies have very high profile volunteers and board members. And these are the kinds of key people in the community that you want to meet to network and do business with. So by getting involved with high level volunteers, this positive effort of giving back to the community will help you network and make new business contacts. So I encourage you to think about what are the prominent charities and nonprofit organizations where you live and think about how you might get involved. And all you have to do is call and explain the kind of services that you can offer your volunteer time with and I'm sure they'll be anxious to get you on board and you'll meet lots of new people and make lots of new contacts. Now, Press seems did somebody say something? Uh, yeah, so just one quick question. Um, just going back to the last slide, you know, regarding um, you know newsletters. You know, um, I have a quick question from uh, Payam in the group saying that you know, with so many entities promoting themselves via newsletters, you know, pretty much what percentage of those people are truly reading your newsletters, and is it actually really an effective way of um, you know getting a larger user base? Yes, I do think it's an effective way, and there's way ways you can track it too. First of all. Just when you're emailing a news, I, I don't necessarily think you have to print and mail a newsletter. I think, you know, today there's lots of vehicles for emailing newsletters and lots of companies that will help you do that. Or you, if you don't have the budget for it, you can email it to your client base and en encourage people to have their friends sign up for it too. I don't think it has to be complicated. I don't think it has to be many pages, even one simple page to get started. And if you give people, you know, I don't, it's very important to give people useful information. And I'll tell you like an interesting story. The man who does our alarm system, he puts out a newsletter that just includes not only information about alarms, but he includes information about interesting topics in the news. He'll include a joke. He'll include um, trending topics. So sometimes I'm just interested in looking at that to get information that doesn't have to do with his own business. But it keeps the, his business name in front of me and his other clients. So I think just even one page newsletter um, offering free advice, which people really appreciate, will keep your name in front of people via the newsletter. And if you want to test it, one thing you could do is you can run periodic contests where you offer something free, even if it's just a t-shirt, and see if people are paying attention to the contest, and that'll give you um, some indication of how many people are paying attention. Are there any other questions at this moment, Zach? Uh, no, not at this moment. Well, seeming, getting press can seem very, very complicated, but you actually can meet the press and get your name out there in the press. And one way to get started is to contact your local community newspaper. All you have to do is to offer to write a free column on your area of expertise. You don't have to be scared by this. You don't have to be a fantastic writer to do this. You simply need to put a clear introductory paragraph together, followed by a list of bullet point suggestions to help people become more familiar with your area of expertise. And of course, be sure to end the column with your name and your business contact information. Just to give you a simple example, let's say you're in the roofing business. You can give people information about when it's the best time to put a new roof on your building, what kind of tiles you should be using, etc. This is the, when you do that and people see that you're an expert in your field, they're much more likely to contact you. And if you do a good job, you might get lucky and the newspaper might ask you to write a regular column. Another simple thing you can do is many communities have a local community access television channel and you can contact that channel and ask them to interview you. There's ways to get more media coverage and if you want to reach out to the larger media outlets like the daily newspapers or popular TV programs, you start out by writing a pitch letter to the columnist or to the producer who covers your industry. In the letter that you write, you should point out some interesting facts regarding a recent news item or a trend in the industry. 
and let them know your history in your area of expertise and the fact that you're available for interviews. And if you've ever done an interview before, they like to know that, so you should put that in your pitch letter. To get in good with the media, it's very important to let producers and writers know that they can call on you anytime as a resource, resource for more information. You should always be really helpful to producers and news writers, even if they're not planning on using you in their column or on their TV program, because you never know when they're going to call you back as a guest. And the more helpful you are, and the more you help them network with people they need as guests, the more likely they are to call you back and keep you in mind for future interviews. When people realize, need to realize about the media is that it's the layering effect of seeing your name in a variety of places that will help you build your reputation. They'll maybe hear your name on a radio program, they'll perhaps see you be interviewed on a TV program, or have your name mentioned in a newspaper column, or even via social media or e-zines. And it's the, the seeing your name repeatedly over a period of time that helps build your reputation and enhance your business. If you're afraid of social media and you're not expert in it, um, one simple way to get started is to call a local school or a college and ask for an intern. Interns also, also, often excuse me, get school credit for helping people and they usually young people know a lot about social media and they can help you post your information and what they get in return if you can't pay them is they get to put on their resume that they helped your social media campaign so it's a win-win situation if you're not already on LinkedIn you absolutely should be and that's a great way to get started and it's very simple all you have to do is include your background about your current business and your work history and then people will start to find you on LinkedIn. I encourage you to ask your family, your friends and your colleagues to endorse you. And importantly, you should search for potential connections on LinkedIn. You shouldn't be shy about reaching out to people you don't know as long as it's appropriate. You can write a brief introductory note to people you don't know on LinkedIn, tell them about yourself, and then you could you save that note and use it many, many times over and over again when you're contacting new people via LinkedIn. You can also enhance your image on social media by regularly posting links to interesting articles in your field. Or again, giving free advice is always a good way to go. So I encourage you to get started if you haven't already done so. Um, also, you should be using Facebook, have a business Facebook page. You should try to be tweeting information about your business. This will all help drive traffic to your website. If you're running special events or handling certain great projects that have wonderful photos, you should post those photos about the events you've conducted. I also encourage your Facebook, you should encourage your Facebook followers to share and like your information. And depending on what your business is, it might be appropriate to hold periodic contests on social media, and that will encourage your followers to interact directly with your business. In summary, if you just get started taking a few of the simple steps we discussed today, you'll be on a new path to creating greater recognition for your business. At Mosetis PR, we've managed the marketing and public relations of companies around the globe. We've helped everybody from major corporations and nonprofit organizations to smaller non, you know, startups and entrepreneurs. We've represented authors, healthcare practices, academic institutions like colleges and universities. We've worked with media companies, pharmaceuticals, and many prominent personalities. We have over 25 years of experience and we can help you with a variety of services if you're interested, such as developing your communications plan, brand, branding your business, helping you get in the media, and God forbid if you need crisis communications, we can help you with that. And we can help you target new markets, write your speeches and newsletters, letters, and help you with your ad campaigns. And we're very proud to be working with Zintro today on this special promotion. We charge $175 an hour, but for Zintro members, we are reducing our rate to $135 per hour on any contract of $2,000 or more. I would like to answer any questions of anybody out there now. We can take the time to address all your questions. 
Thank you, Tina, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, Zach, are there any questions you would like to share at this point? Um, one question we have from Felix is, what is the one thing you know a, a company can do right away that will have the most impact in the way of publicizing their business? Well, it varies from company to company. Um, I would say the most important thing is to get out there and meet people and tell pe everybody that you can about what you do. And obviously, you want to try to meet people that are in your field. As I gave the earlier example, if you're in the healthcare field, you want to go to as many business meetings as possible in the healthcare field so people know what services you're offering. So I would say meeting people is the single most important thing. Um, I have another question from uh, Helene. She wrote, um, you know, she currently works with arthritis and, use, and has used the hashtag, you know, hashtag arthritis in more than 500 tweets, but has never had anyone retweet it or contact her regarding it. You know, what are other tips you can use on social media to you know, get a better response rate? Um, it's, I'm not sure what kind of tweets Helene is using, but I find the most helpful kind of tweets are informational tweets. For example, if there's a new um, method of controlling arthritis pain, that would be a very helpful tweet that people would really want to know about. And that is much more likely when you give that kind of advice that's helpful to people that's going to get retweeted. Um, she just simply replied that you know all of her tweets um, you know contain their informational tweets. You know, is there anything else she could do? Um, yes, it, she can um, link to the website. I don't know if where, where she's working on. I assume they have a website. She can uh, entice people to go to the website by giving them free tips and saying, if you need more information on controlling pain, or if you want to participate in this, for example, walkathon to help arthritis sufferers, you know, click on our website. Um, also, if they're working with any prominent personalities that might be involved with the organization, like any celebrities or big business people, um, people like to see that. And she can say, you know, come meet so and so at our next meeting, and you know, b bring a link back to the website that will give more information about the meeting. So the more you can do to enhance um, your organization via prominent personalities, that's that's a big feature that helps people a lot. Or if you can announce that there's a free conference where people will get a lot of good information about how to control their arthritis symptoms, that would help a lot. Great. Um, another question um, we have from David is, they said that you know he's tried to set an intern program up for college students at a local university and no one has been signing up for it. You know, what are some creative ideas he can use to attract more candidates to apply for the position? Well, I think he should say what he's offering because perhaps he's just saying what he needs. But if he's saying that in return he will give outstanding references for anybody who does a good job, um, if there are any fringe benefits that he can offer, like maybe providing lunch or dinner, or sometimes um, students have trouble with transportation, if there's any way he can um, f provide transportation to and from the job, I think all, anything that you can do to entice people with special offers, um, rather than just explaining your needs, that would be helpful. Excellent. And he can, excuse me, he can also announce their, you know, put thanks on his website to any intern that does a good job and, and, that, and, and, and also thank them via their social media so that will help get their intern's name out there. Perfect. Um, next question we have is from Meg uh, asking that, um, you know, how much should a small startup company be spending on their social media marketing efforts? You know, she's a niche business, she does merger and, I guess, merger and acquisition consulting and you know, is there a number she can kind of like look towards when, when budgeting for social media and, and, pub, and publicity? Well, of course, it's very different depending on everybody's budget. Um, but I would say it's an important aspect of the business, and if you're not able to handle it all yourself, if you can hire a consultant, the, you know, the fees range dramatically depending on who you hire. If you're on a limited budget and you can find a student who, who's great at it, you might be able to spend as little as $100 a month. If you want to hire a major firm who specializes in social media, you could be spending a lot more, such as you know $2,500 or more a month. So you have to figure out your budget, but I would say um, as sort of 
the guesstimate, I would consider that is in terms of your public relations and media budget, I would try to budget at least 20% towards social media. Well, I want to thank everybody for attending. I really appreciate it. And if you need more advice or you're interested in working with Mosetta's Public Relations, we look forward to speaking to you. You can contact us directly via email, which is listed on this slide, or you can call us at 516-487. 5866, and we will offer the reduced rate for all the Zintro members. Thank you, Tina. That was a great presentation, and I personally